everybody, this is Jordan from Modular Head Shop. So today I'll be talking about proper engine oil priming. Um, this is a brand new Gen 2 engine built for my buddy Pat. You may have seen Pat and a couple of Andrew from Mustang Lifestyles videos. He's been helping Andrew with the car as far as getting the engine in and out. So this is his personal motor. It's a nice Gen 2 setup. It's got our ported heads on there. Uh, stock cams and valve train, rods and pistons, upgraded pins, pretty basic thousand horsepower build um, but I am going to go over properly priming the oil system today so what that will entail is rigging up a cheap lawn garden sprayer to put pressurized oil through the oil filter adapter where your pressure sensor would be now I still have this off because I wanted to show you guys um, a few things Patrick's engine did come to us with piston ring issues. It was just burning oil and, and stuff like that. But the other problem that we found is when we pulled the oil pan, there was just a ton of metallic sludge up under there. And that was due to an oil pump gear that had the incorrect tip clearance. So uh, you can see this on our little preview. I'm not going to pull out my fueler gauges, but we shot it earlier with a 25 thousandths fueler gauge. It had 28 thousandths of tip clearance when I pulled it out of his engine. I'm gonna go right in the trash where half that stuff belongs anyways. But we're not going there. <laughs> we're gonna prime a <laughs> engine today. So the reason I have the valve covers off is just for um, demonstration purposes so you can see the oil flowing up through the lash adjusters. This is our handy dandy $10 lawn sprayer from Home Depot. If you're gonna spray your, for weeds afterwards, I get the oil out. It'll still kill the weeds. Yeah, so we're going to take this piece here, get it out of here. I'm going to tap that for an eighth inch MPT fitting right here. We're going to put the another quarter inch MPT to dash six adapter in the oil filter adapter. And then that's how we're going to prime it up. So uh, this is close enough. All you should have to do is actually tap it. I do not think on this one you have to relieve it with the drill bit, but we're going to see here in just a moment. All right. all right, so don't mind my ghetto workbench today, but this is the only, only space I have available right now. We're just so busy today. All right, so eighth inch MPT. I'm going to tap it three, four, five threads. Nothing crazy. put our adapter fitting in there. All right, it's hand tight and we are just going to barely snug this up with a crescent. Doesn't need to be anything crazy. I might make a nicer version of this at some point. This is gonna work for now. Okay. All right, so I got my eighth inch to dash six adapter screwed in there. Not the prettiest thing in the world, but it's gonna work for what we want. Now I'm going to set that over there. Now, this port here on the Coyote, quarter inch NPT. Now on non-coyotes, it's typically an eighth inch NPT. You don't need no Teflon tape or anything like that. Don't snug it up hard. We're, this is very temporary. Okay. Now, the next thing I'm gonna do is install this here. Now, you wanna come here. I'll show people the not so pretty stuff too. Here, all this assembly, and <clears throat> this is just assembly oil coming out from the mains. No big deal. It's nothing but cosmetic.
you got that part on? You can see I marked this here. Just so I can get my alignment good. Alright. So make sure this does have an O-ring. Just so they didn't miss it from the factory. This can only go on one way and it gives you just a little bit of room. This is a little bit deceiving because I've seen some oil filter adapter tubes like this that do use O-rings. But this one does not. So I'm just going to slide it here. I believe it's a 14 millimeter hex. Um, but we will verify that in just one moment. It's not the easiest thing to get off. I would... I would recommend trying to get it off while it's bolted to the engine versus holding it. So. Okay, yep, it is a 14 millimeter hex. I'm just gonna snug this up. FL500S filter, driven BR30 braking oil, that's what I prefer for braking oil. After this, we'll switch over to FR50. Alright, we'll just fill this up a little bit. If you actually jack the one side of your car, you know, like this, it'll keep you from spilling the oil. I'm just kidding. All right. So, we got at least three quarters of a quart. I'm gonna put two quarts in here, and then I'm gonna let Patrick take this with him hooked up just like this. So once they get the engine in the car, they can reprime it. I wouldn't, I would prefer you prime it like this, you know, within 30 or 40 minutes of you firing it back up. six adapter you could really use anything that you wanted you could even if you wanted to be super um, simple and cheap about it quarter inch MPT to a hose barb and then you could literally just cut this hose and figure out what hose barb fits into this hose if you wanted to do it like that I'm trying to make it look pretty though and flare is tight. Excuse my crescent wrenches. It's just easier for time's sake. ready.
Hold it till it's pretty hard to, uh, you know, getting a little bit of resistance. We're just going to slightly push the handle. Oh, and we're going to have to tilt this engine up or it's going to puke out that side. Think about that. You can hear it coming up now. All right, let's look right here. Look at the, see it coming up through there? You can hear it. Yeah. All right, that's the sound of oil pressure, folks. That is priming an engine. All right. Now before anything's happened, all of our tensioners and everything, they've all got oil pressure in them. And that's exactly what we want. So, All right everyone, that's gonna wrap it up for tonight. Uh, I hope this helps some of you. This is the correct way to prime an engine. Yes, the delivery method may be a little ghetto, but it's easy to do at home and it is the proper way. Priming the engine from an external oil pressure source is always the best. Not off the starter, Regardless if you take the spark plugs out, the starter is not going to turn the crankshaft fast enough to produce good oil pressure. You want to keep putting all the oil or keep pumping until you can hear or see the oil coming up through the valve covers. This one was really loud today. So I'm pretty confident that if you don't have any uh, you know, extra noise um, causing an issue to where you can actually hear it, you could do it all just off the sound. Um, if anybody has any questions, Please put them in the comments below. If you like the content, like and subscribe, and we're going to keep it rolling. Thank you.